I just feel like we all went on a journey and, and a kind of shared journey. And this was such, a, there are so many uh, layers to this experience that we've had and that was shared with us, whether that's artistic or, or of, you know, the start of a pandemic that no one knew would last as long as it did and of an artistic journey that two women have brought to us that goes through time in, in such a, a deeply moving way. And uh, first, I want to thank both of you for sharing this so generously with all of us, with Yiru. Uh, today's program is a co-presentation with NYU uh, Tish with the uh, Scorsese Institute and Zhen Zheng, thank you so much for for being here for all the work that you've uh, volunteered and hopefully we'll get to hear a little bit about that as well. But um, but I want to thank all of you for being here with us and uh, I hope you had a chance also to see the Meiji exhibition upstairs. If not, please do come back. As you know, you've seen uh, Aiko's grandfather's painting, which is in that exhibition, which I think is, is um, quite a different way of understanding an, an exhibition. And it's as personal as this film was in so many ways. Um, good, good evening or good afternoon. Um, we're in this twilight zone. Uh, between uh, day and night, um, fall and winter, um, and COVID, and post-COVID. Uh, so uh, thank you so much for bringing this film to New York. This is actually a premiere in New York on the big screen. Uh, we had a plan for it to be at Rio China Bionier last fall uh, with um, all three of them in attendance, uh, but Wen Hui got COVID in Europe and could not travel here. Uh, so very much we're still in this unfolding saga uh, story. Um, and uh, I'm very touched in the beginning, was very touched in the beginning when the two of you um, approached each other on stage right here. Um, um, reunion, finally after this time, right? This is your five years, uh, what, since uh, 20, almost, yeah, four years, four years, yeah. Uh, for the first time reuniting in New York. Uh, so it is uh, a very um, riveting story that concerns all of us in many ways. And I think it, it, the experience has touched uh, every family, every individual one way or another. Uh, so you, through your, cameras, your uh, movements, your histories, your memories, and the e turns uh, assistance in the beautiful editing uh, has now cemented this memory uh, with us and for us. Uh, we're very grateful. Um, so, and for, thank you for um, Rachel for making this happen here together, uh, sharing our different communities um, uh, in this beautiful space. So I won't be saying a lot. I think we, you know, have about half hour um, for conversations. Um, I probably just start by asking um, um, Wen Hui and Ego. Uh, I have watched this film before several times, you know, at different stages of the editing on small screen, and it was just surprising to see on the big screen so beautiful, so. Uh, um, um, emotionally loaded, uh, um, but I think many audience members, and including myself in some ways, uh, would also like to know, um, when you met in January 2020, uh, you were supposed to develop a piece together, right? Uh, a dance a performance a piece, a multimedia maybe, uh, um, and what, what that piece be or, or has it 
being made. I suppose not, right? So the piece has become the film in a way, <laughs> um, but cut short also by the outbreak of the pandemic, and you had to go back to Japan right away. So, but now in hindsight, um, uh, can you talk about uh, what kind of work, you know, this uh, uh, collaborative um, multimedia or purely uh, movement-based uh, work uh, uh, were you envisioning at that point in those first two weeks, you know, when you were workshopping together, living with Wen Hui in that beautiful apartment, uh, which I also had <laughs> slept in the bed you slept. It's beautiful, it's the very theater-like stage space for, for work and uh, uh, rest. Um, so, yes, was there anything emerging, you know? Did you actually begin to form some ideas about what will be, and are you planning now, now that you have reunited, uh, to pick that up again and, and continue to complete that interrupted um, project. Okay, I start. I would like to start deeply, deeply thank you for my good friend who is in the audience. I think some friend in the film, you can see, you see Gloria, Ken, and Ralph Samuelson. Yeah, you are all in a film. There's like last 30 years, big support me. I would like to thank you for this moment. <laughs> for uh, answer your question, actually, I think today is starting point. <laughs> You saw the film, we thought we don't want to do, okay, money is here, premiere is here. Okay, go ahead, you guys work. We want to be really honest, deeply, what we really want to say for the society. Yeah. So, um, as you can see, she's very firm about this, and luckily, I could fly to Beijing. That was the ACC, Asian Cultural Council's um, fellowship, and I'm very, very thankful. Throughout my career, there was a number of different ways that they have supported me, and I very much as a part of the community of international you know, exchange, which of course has gotten very difficult, as we all remember, during the COVID, impossible, except by, da by then, we were lucky to have Zoom. <laughs> and phones and all that. So, um, yes, the idea is I go there for one month and she comes back here for one month. And by then, vaguely, we thought we would make a piece because that's what we do. <laughs> but almost from the first day I arrived, we talked like five nights through. <laughs> we slept in the morning. And she, actually, she was very firm. Echo, I like to work with you, but I don't want to work in the same way as you have done before with a bunch of, you know. I mean, she's more of the choreographer than I ever have been. You know, she knows how to direct a bunch of people. And I, as some of you know, I'm not really a choreographer as much as I'm a performer. So, you know, we had this very, um, I think we were friends first before we are collaborators. And it's like a long distance relationship, you know. <laughs> you are only can advance quite a big leap when we are together. Of course, phone call and Zoom can follow, but not without being together. And the fact she had brought me to her home, I could have just stayed in a hotel. But I think that would have been very different. She even said, can I come in when you are sleeping to your bedroom? <laughs> okay, whatever. <laughs> right? And we both had this agreement, as you noticed, everything was on our, uh, she had a camera, but I, <laughs> this is, right? So I think from the very beginning, it, we really wasn't sure, and even this time, she only arrived three days ago. Yes, and she was very clear. Now we actually have a uh, um, commissioned 
um, invitation. And implication is we will accept it with gratitude. But she's always saying, don't decide until something comes. So I'm kind of going with the flow. And I respect her. This is a very strong woman. This is not to say I follow her guide. I think this is something we, even last few days, we were here together. I say something, she says something. If I say something, I look at her. And I completely trust if she doesn't agree, she will say it. But we so often, strangely, we agree. We don't expect always to agree, but we happen to agree. And living, growing up in such a different time, in such a different system, different country, and different ways. I've been here in this country since 76, and I go second to her. Thank you for my friends who had been with me. Almost everyone of you that I know, except a few, had been friends for a very long time. But here we're just probably taking time. And she's also very busy right now. <laughs> so I need to make sure we take good preparation. Uh, we always thought when we were shooting, we had more footage, and just in case we might use it. So not everything went in. So there are that resource. What we might say after these screenings, we might, we might be done with it. We might just do ourselves. But one thing we know will be two of us. Want to be a five group member, want to be a 10 people group, it will be two of us working. Uh, speaking of the, yes, the footage, uh, the film, um, I talked to Wang Hui quite a few times uh, over Zoom while you were editing because we were developing also another project uh, across the oceans over Zoom. Uh, and uh, I kept asking, how much footage you have? Uh, and, uh, um, and, you know, what was the idea? Because you came together to make... Um, uh, uh, dance piece, you know, uh, movement piece. When did you have the idea to actually make a film? Uh, I know Wen Hui had been habitually uh, filming, recording since, uh, you know, Cao Chang Di, um, the, the Cao Chang Di uh, workstation uh, for 10 years, and she had already made several films. Uh, so she was in that habit, recording, uh, keeping uh, footage, keeping archive. Uh, uh, but you were also filming with uh, iPhone. Uh, so at what point you decided this would be a film? Um, but then, um, because the footage was not abandoned, right? Uh, you were using a video camera that you, Sony, you were using mostly for your other work too, and the, the iPhone. Uh, I suppose that would present a lot of challenges to post-production editing, <laughs> right? Uh, so I guess the question is for all of you in a way, but okay, uh, ending with Yulu too. You know, when did you decide that you're going to actually make a film about the process? Um, um, and because you say, you know, process actually is the most important thing, you know, more than the, the end result, the commission and whatnot. Um, and then finally, when, when you went back to Japan and you said, oh, you know, the footage is staying here, but you will you know, meet in America, which didn't happen until now, right? So everything had to be done over, uh, over computer, over Zoom. Uh, so uh, yes, I guess it's a bit of production question, uh, but also for us to get to know the creative processes behind that, yes. I really want to say this, actually look the, watch the film. I was really happy to have young generation who is editing help us because in the beginning, two of us, we start pandemic time a locked in a, every in the house in Beijing and the New York. We do almost every day, and we transform to our footage together in uh, uh, we uh, the Google Drive. Google Drive. <laughs> Yes. This is Echo teaching me how to use Google Drive. <laughs> we put all the footage, we start editing. I was thinking, ah, no, this cannot do the film. 
because we sports like Aquacom for one month in China. I have the one month in New York, but we only do the half. We only have a half footage. We don't have what I'm here. And I beginning, I don't have confidence. I said, okay. And then we start, both of us, to editing, editing. Yeah. And then we have this yeah. young generation. And I was, thank you. Yes. Oh, I um, think lucky. Go. Right. As on the bio said, uh, I was an NYU student. I went to Tisch too for film production. And I took ECOS class the last year of my university year. And actually in 2020, in January, I visited Wen Hui's house. Before I went to Japan actually to visit Eko's mentor, like dance mentor's son's studio. As the owner of the studio. And I was brought by my father who, who's immersed in Japanese culture for a long time. So I, so there's a lot of influences from both Japanese and Chinese elements in my life already, but that visit to the studio has really made me and Eko's bonding even even like more bounded. So when the COVID, like when the pandemic happened, and my mom made a decision to send me back here to New York, and she said, "Do you remember during the SARS time that?" I send you to grandma's house because I know that our colleagues has, you know, um, those sickness. So I send you to grandma's house so you can be safe. So I want you to send you to New York. If she didn't make that decision, I, I guess we wouldn't have this film because when I came back, after a while, Echo said, oh, you're, you're in New York. I said, yeah. And she's like, how are you doing? How's your family? So she's really cute. And she's then like, do you remember Wen Hui? I said, yeah, I visited you guys in Beijing. She's like, we've got a bunch of islands videos, but we are not sure if it can be made into a film. And then I said, Give, give me some time, I will give it a try. So I spent some time trying to make a first draft and a write storylines treatment because at the time, I just graduated and I didn't really know what to do with my life. <laughs> and I thought maybe a film would be, would be good. So I was like, no matter what, I'm gonna get the footage and try to make it into something. So after a first, second draft, I sent to Echo. It was like, actually, it's not bad. Let's let's go with the flow and see. So that's how it started. That I got a bunch of different footages, and I was really careful. I don't want it to be like a vlog, like because it's from different sources and it's really like those storytelling, the narratives are pretty broken up. But how do you make it into one piece? And we or originally thought it could be done in 2021. And then it's 2022, which a lot of things happen in my hometown, Shanghai. And that kept modifying the piece along the way. And it's, it's difficult because things also change in my life. I'm no longer a student, I'm becoming an educator also. And that also influences how I treat film it as a medium. It's not only, oh, my expression, how I think about the body, you know, but also think about, hey, how do I really narrate this thing as a younger female, you know, generation? So at the, by the end of 2022, I said to Eiko, we probably need to finish this. It's two years since that, but sort of like we can be finished with that, but not yet because the whole bunch of other things happened in many, many places. So we, we just held it up. And then I think, yeah, just talking about the creative process. So. I made a draft here, probably most of the time with Echo. We edited it our premiere, as you can also see in the film. She's really good at it. And also when was really experienced and really knows what she wants in the film. That's why me as a young, like an emerging filmmaker, sometimes feel really stressed and pressured that I really wanna make sure that each draft I present to them 
is is the best I can do. And then I will get a bunch of feedback. I will send the weed transfer and I will get feedback and I will do it again. So probably in my drive there are like 18, basically 18 or 20 drafts, which is like feature length, like 90 minutes long. And each one has like drastic differences. So I would say it's not an easy way to do documentary. <laughs> um, but also I think this film really also changed my life and also also feel like hey I'm not like actually I can contribute something to it that that I feel very very grateful. Yeah, I think it, it really was great to have your presence in the film because the collaboration uh between Echo and Wen Hui um, a trans Asian, transnational, and somewhat transgenerational too. Uh, you started back in the 70s, um, and when we came later, and uh, you were professor, you know, to Yiru. Um, many of your other works, and Wen Hui, I know more um, through my work uh, on her, uh, with her, that, that she uh, mentors a lot of younger. Uh, students, uh, both in filmmaking and in dance. So it is really in tune with the spirit of their work. But I will just ask a quick question or just commentary even, because as you said, you don't want this end up being a vlog. Um, and I saw some of the earlier edits, I thought, okay, it's a little bit thin, it's a bit just you know, chronological, um, stitching together the limited footage you had. Um, day one, day two, day three, you know, workshop here. And a lot of things, a little bit of skimming over the surface rather than, you know, sinking in, having deeper conversations. And we still wish there would be more footage and more conversations. Uh, but uh, the insertion of the footage, historical archival footage of both of your past work made a huge difference to this video diary. Uh, so it takes on a different dimension. Uh, your past lives, your 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 parallel uh, careers uh, intertwine uh, and dialogue with each other. So we get more out of it's not just simply a COVID story, uh, but it is uh, running deeper. Um, I'm actually very glad that you mentioned that because I remember in the beginning I wrote the treatment as as we we learned in film school that I actually proposed three storylines. That one is their work and one is their lives. And the third is at the actual COVID storylines. Actually, you mentioned all of them saying that, hey, I actually see, I was like, yes, this is how it feels to be, you know, actually editing makes, like it, it is really the art of editing that together. And I noticed, because even though seeing this for many, many, many times, and still little changes yeah. as an editor, and you receive the audience's response, or like, yes, I did that, just like little moments that you know you can change the whole viewing experiences. So I think that's also the fun and the, the precious thing working with those artists, because it's not only, you know, just documentary editing, but it's fun and it's just really inspiring that inner performance heart and that inner artist's heart, and that can just keeps that energy going, and I just really enjoy working with both of them. Uh, yes, and I really want to credit Wen Fei in the first time, because we both kind of got into the feeling of, you know, because we are editing islands, in the hope of those islands, let's say, comfort women house, you know, it's not a comfort women, comfort women house, or the Nanjing um, Masakya Museum, she, she shot beautiful, very long, slow, you know, uh, footage. But we are really thinking perhaps we'll use it for the performances, right? And that, that we were motivated. But once we decided, or we just figured out that COVID is not leaving us anytime soon, we have to switch, right? But by looking at, she already said it at the very beginning. <laughs> we can probably make something, right? And she's always, you know, she's such an important person in the performing arts and also some of the films that she has made. 
that she's much younger than me, but in a way she's almost like a grandma <laughs> to the certain younger artist. And I had a privilege of being in her house and shooting. And, and she was shooting more because she came to the, uh, even though we lost the sound <laughs> in that section today, and I apologize on this. We are so excited just like chatting through. Um, just like, because she was shooting, I had and the guts to put it on my own iPhone. But then sometimes her camera was not recording the sound, so we literally started to use my camera. So we never meant to make this, right? But when we had islands and we don't know what to do with it, we really needed another person to come in. And it was that person. And the fact that she, she's really involved in this was, was very much a plus. But the first time she started to bring more history document into this, when we was clearly saying, no, we would like to stay very personal, two of us. And history comes into two of us, rather than hitching other things. So I really want to credit her. Yes. T too much can be too much. Too little can be too little. It's really about the fine tuning and the proportions. Uh, um, Rachel, you want to also ask a question or comment? Well, before I open it up to all of you, I, I thought um, there are two things that really strike me, having also lived through various iterations. One is the whole notion of body memory, and body memory is both literally the body, but it's also the memory of the work of, of your creative time. Um, so I wanted you to comment on both body memory and the title, No Rule is Our Rule. Actually, for me, you are talking. We are discuss and anything. And then we start talking what, how we do the title. What is the title? I said, ah, yeah. When one, one day we, we, we discuss, we drink, too much in the morning, five <laughs> o'clock. <laughs> you said something like uh, this kind of yeah. words. Let's do this. Yeah. This is our title. Yeah. Then we always drink too much. <laughs> but no, right. stopped. Well, you, uh, saw, yeah. you know, your friend had a case of red wine in your house. Remember? <laughs> Secrets. <laughs> That's the like first week I arrived. There's a whole case of red wine. That was very nice oil for us. And I think also you probably have to realize I worked as Ekand Koma, and he, uh, she worked with Wenga for a long time, and we both started to work separately. It's just coincidence in a way, but really put our being together a very open and naked conversation. <laughs> if one of them, the guys were there, we would not be talking in the same exactly. way. Exactly. Yeah, no, I think uh, I like the title right away, you know, uh, knowing when we very well and knowing you also now over the last few years more. Um, for both of you coming from East Asian cultures, countries uh, with a lot of rules, <laughs> a lot of uh, uh, family rules and uh, cultural rules and so on, it is a very bold statement. It's you know, it's anarchic, it's feminist, uh, and it's uh, artistic manifesto in some ways. Uh, and probably also uh, for Iru, how to, how to embody that uh, spirit through some disciplines of editing, some rules of the game. And, um, so I, th I think it's quite fitting, yeah. And in terms of body memory, and please add yours, um, you know, those of you who know me, I'm such a chatter. I talk, talk, talk. Uh, but I don't really talk in the work usually. And it's been kind of changing as I get older. So that part has been happening. I was originally, and still, a dance artist, movement artist. But we both make videos, and sometimes even film, um, depending on what's the sources and the distributions are. And I'm just really realizing being with her, I and many of you, we are kind of spoiled. Well, we had been spoiled in a way 
I didn't have to think too carefully. Sometimes I can say, and I don't have to worry about some consequences. And I like talking and being in a different countries in a different system from my own. I'm just realizing how important it is to keep working and selecting to, to whom you talk to and how you talk to. And I feel like I really learned a lot by just having a friend who come from uh, a different history. And then finding each other very much the same spirit. And body memory she talks about is very much the part of you can talk, but if you don't talk, you still think. And body remembers it. And that is something I have always felt that way. But being a, such a chatter myself, I was so eager just to communicate. But just being with her, still chatting, but realizing the, how body carries is, is very, very strong um, running on my end. I really respect that. Should we open for the Yes, audience? let's take about 10 minutes. And um, do we have a mic there? Thank you. Um, first of all, just greatest appreciation to um, everyone here today. It was such a breathtakingly candid movie. And my question to you guys is actually about the notion that stood out in the film such that individual history as well as the more authoritative official narrative of history and the intricate relationship of those two elements. I was curious about you know, how you've um, sort of been able to observe and interpret that because I was so blown away by how, like for example, Ms. Wenhui, like I noticed in the film that it, it was noted that you were born in the early 60s, right? And I'm, immediately I was thinking, wow, what a woman had ahead of her time with all those artistic achievements um, regarding that, that time, which is the chaotic 10 years of cultural revolution dare I say, and, and also same, similarly Ms. Echo mentioned how her father uh, sort of chose a way, like he, he zagged when everyone zigged into the war, right? And that was so touching, and so I would love to hear what you think about that notion. Thank you. Um, actually, I work with personal memory. I really uh, like her too many, many years. I thought, yeah, um, personal memory is always linked to the world, linked to what happened. No, what everyone is the one in this world, but this one, of course, connecting with the, the big world. If we also for my generation in China, we education was a big. History, like Hong Da Xu Shi, I don't know how to this, this word. Grand narratives. Grand narratives. Uh, for me, I'm against this grand narrative. This is the like point. Yeah, in that sense, Japan also right had a grand narrative. Okay, Second World War, everybody went to the war. That's not true, right? My my, my father was drafted, but he didn't go to China or anywhere where Japan was invading. And that's hard to do. And sometimes it's a lack that works or not. Um, but it's important, grand narrative exists with intentions. And to me, if I don't have a power, I'm not a historian, but sometimes I talk to my students, episode. I sometimes I call it even gossip. Right? Like how, for a fine dining, maybe some duplicate between gossip and the episode. And myself, as a working artist, I'm not, I don't have academic training at all. So I did it think together with a student. And you know, in the film, when Faye said, even you are 19 or 20, you have the body memory. It's not like only all the people have a body memory. And I think that is very important notion. I feel as a ge younger generation, everything 
like the history that they experienced before, to me, it's grand narration. But it doesn't mean that the life that we are living right now, that doesn't become a grand narration in the future, let's say 20 years later, just because we're living here. And I think the only way out of that question is to remember it, is to remember what you personally remember, so that even five years later, 10 years later, 20 years later, you look back, you was like, no, I didn't remember that way 20 years ago, even if that's the grand narr narrative. So that's, that's why we made the film. And also the remembrance could also be um, implicated by other people's narrative. You know, how much of us think we remember our childhood, but it's often because your parents told you about it or you saw the photos about it, right? So in a way, sometimes it is true our memories are also the result of either the society or family who told you, who showed you. So I actually had experienced that two weeks ago here where I was presenting about my grandfather whom I don't know. And I had to make some research. And then when I found out, all of a sudden, what I remember from my grandma comes up. So in a way, it's not a, like one thing that had always been there. Sometimes you have something else that opens that up. So it's not like in a, from one, every semester you remember everything from here. It just all interwines. And so I always feel like if I can keep it somewhere in the pocket, it comes up somewhere. Even though I'm not constantly remembering it in a very neat, like history text way. What do you think in New York nowadays, positive or negative? I live in New York since 1976. I go back to Japan one, twice a year. Of course, harder. Well, I, I'm the one who often asks why I'm still here. And the bottom line is I'm here in New York because I'm here, I'm working, and I have encounters. I have friends who are actually sitting right now. So the hardships are harder. But is New York really hardest comparing to other parts of the world? That's not true. My friend comes from a different part of the world. So I don't really want to cry over how hard it is here. It is hard. But I think, I think we are still living our New York life, at least as far as I'm concerned. And it's very inspiring for me that I can go to and listen and see things and can think about. So I'm still feeling positive to continue my working life here. I must say for me it's positive. For me it's the big the bomb for my mind to open my mind. When I'm the first time I get ACC grantee, I'm stay here, I start my mind started really big change, and yeah. I spent the past almost seven years always in New York City, basically. And when you ask that question, and I look at our faces, I mean, I mean, just the workers' faces. And I thought, are you asking about like? Um, how we feel in New York City as Asians. <laughs> I don't know, I think that's, that can be in, in, you know, implied. And I would say it's, it's, uh, it's complicated feeling. It's complicated during the past three years when this film is happening, uh, was happening. And there are a lot of changes, even in New York City, even in New York. I'm glad that you didn't ask for us, you know, in the beginning we are sort of from another country. How's United States? <laughs> it's, 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 it's different, I feel. But somehow it's the same that because we are not in our homeland and things are happening there, the history is also happening there, while we are experiencing the other side of the history from the new NYC's perspective. So I would say, because I'm young, I still feel it's a city of chances, and I feel it's a lot of positivities, but I'm very fully aware of the, also the negative part of it. So I hope that answers your question. Thanks. I hope I can say this. Um, 
The question is interesting. I've always been very interested by Wen Hui, my longtime friend, relationship to memory, and this idea of the grand narrative. And I think what's a struggle for us here in New York or in America is that there's a lot of competing neg narratives. And it's a little harder to set your own personal uh, perception against the multiplicity of them. Uh, I, you know, I've also been very interested in memory and sometimes just at the very physical level of dance uh, expression that I can identify as clearly associated to personal experience or trauma or growth or, or history or uh, education. Just interesting to see how well they've succeeded, I think, in pitting that personal against the cultural. So for me, that's very, very interesting. But as an American, I find it very difficult to um, quite enter into the same spot. <laughs> Thank you so much for the film and, and provides a kind of uh, outline for your, for your methodology of working. As someone uh, who is uh, very clumsy with her body, I, I'm very uh, interested in the kind of uh, uh, restorative, uh, therapeutic aspect of your uh, performances. I wonder how ordinary people like us can prepare, exercise our bodies, um, or, or also also as a very uh, uh, amateur about, about dance, uh, have your work has been influenced by, uh, uh, what is it called, a uh, uh, prompt contact? Uh, oh, contact improv. Contact improv, contact. thank you. Have, you. have your work been in, influenced by that? Thank you. No. <laughs> and, and me neither. Yeah, we're both different, huh? I have a dance education. I take oh, yeah. 20 years, just want to drop out my education. This uh, ballet and the walking, the attitude on the stage, <laughs> always I taught myself, be here, don't do anything. Just be here, listen to your body, listen to of course, the, uh, we have uh, uh, the, some training that we, we talk later. And uh, well, she also came to America, and you're also taking many people's classes, right? And I don't take classes, especially in dance. Maybe nothing else, really. <laughs> well, one, I didn't have money, and two, I was always working, and so, you know, certain Personal friends had offered me, oh, Echo, you have no sense of rhythm. Let me teach you. And then she gives up. So I'm kind of like left, left alone to my own device. Uh, but luckily, by the time we were really together, you know, she's not in the same person as she was before, right? So just one episode, I asked her uh, brother when we were stuck in that hotel. <laughs> Was all was Wenfei always like this? And he said, No, 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 no. She was never like this when she was a kid. And I said, What happened to her? And she said, Modern dance. <laughs> ACC. So can I add? I I heard one more component to that question, and that has to do with the body, and and movement. And I'm thinking about delicious movement. The idea that there are bodies that that don't have to be quote unquote trained. And in a way this aligns with the idea of body memory yes. and that you remember sometimes body memory is in conjunction with another person. So part of this, and, and what's interesting, you're highly trained, you did not come out of that background, but you're both equally um, committed to the, to, the, to the body and the body's you know, life through, through time and space. So I'm just wondering if there's a part of the response that might be about someone who does not think of themselves as a dancer, yeah. and yet you have a body, and you, you are both, you have both worked with non, quote unquote non-dancers. So I'm just wondering if the response you might give has to do with you know, if somebody sees themselves as a quote-unquote non-dancer, 
and yet they have a body and they want to be a part of this, how would you respond? Well, my class is called Delicious Movement, Koron. Time is not even, space is not empty. So that is my course title. And I make it sure there will be no more than few dance majors in my class. And the reason is the people who are trained in dance, you can tell it. And sometimes people who haven't really danced to danced could be intimidated or start to assume this is what's supposed to happen in a class, and I don't want it. And I'm not that kind of a teacher. I'm not that kind of a performer. And that your question had actually reminded me when she set it up. While I was in Beijing, everything I did was she set it up, right? I just came to be with her. She sets up whom we can have a dinner with, where I can have a presentation, which was not my idea. She set it up, the workshop. OK. But then she takes my workshop. And considering how she's a, such an important teacher and advanced, you know, like I can, and her taking a class with so many of her dancer friends was very beautiful. And I really, so whether you have a dance training or not, that availability, that willingness to join is what makes us friends. And for you, come to my workshop. <laughs> You'll have a good time. A workshop, we have a workshop next Saturday. Oh, uh, so we will start uh, with the body movement sessions, very therapeutic, uh, very, no rule is our rule. <laughs> And then we proceed with a presentation, with slides, and more movements about I am 60, Wang Hui's uh, solo multimedia work, uh, which I had the fortune to work with over Zoom over the years, except for a few in-person uh, encounters and discussions. My question is, is that OK? I don't have a question. I just share one answer. <laughs> One, my understanding about the question uh, about this name, no rules are rules. Uh, I'm one who is 40 some years friend. And we were start in Beijing Dance Academy in the same class, same bedroom, <laughs> same cafe She's area. in the film. <laughs> <laughs> so um, from my understanding, no rules, rules is her character. <laughs> She helping always like that, always have question against. You know how much rule we have. Like uh, you're the best student, you must follow the rules. She's not. <laughs> that's I just share this. I see that's her. This name is Wen Hui. I'm so proud of her. That is a Thank great you. final comment. I think no rule is our rule, and maybe we all need to carry that. Yiru, Eiko, Wenwei, Zhenzhang, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And all of you, thank you for being here. <laughs>